And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write this gathering amongst our hasanat and make it a way of us to enter the highest level of Jannah, Jannah al Firdaus. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all this opportunity of being so close to the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an opportunity to prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan. And alhamdulillah, we give shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. You see, the Shaykh, he mentioned a verse from the Quran. He said, in shakartum la azidannakum. And this is a verse that is very important for us to understand. Now they're both probably way more knowledgeable than me that when it comes to the Arabic language. But if you look at the verse, la in shakartum la azidannakum, and you study a little bit of the Arabic language, you know that the lamb there, the first lamb, la, is an emphasis. You know, in is also an emphasis. And you know the verb shakartum is a verb that perhaps you may do it one time. So la in shakartum. Verily and most probably, if you are to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe one time. La azidannakum. La, again it's emphasis. Azidannakum is a verb that, that continues. So if you were to give shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to give to you. Subhanallah. This is, this is from the Rahman, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is this opportunity that I'm talking about? Our Shaykh mentioned one of the words that the word Ramadan comes from. But there's another word that perhaps it may come from. And that's a word, Ramadan which means intense heat. It means intense heat. When you have intense heat, what does it do? When you want the best quality of gold, what does it have to go through? It has to go through that cleansing process. It has to go through that heat. And I know our doctor will go through the, the details about what temperature you will need for that heat and so forth. You need to go to a specific heat. And if you heat something over and over again, it becomes stronger. And the more you cleanse it, the more stronger it gets, the value increases. See, this is what Ramadan does to our spiritual soul. This is what Ramadan does to our spiritual soul. It comes, it cleanses us, we learn from it, we take that opportunity and we move on. Each and every one of us in here, knows at least one person that died this past year. Each and every one of us in here. And I always like to remind myself and all of my brothers and sisters that death comes to us when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees it to come. كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِكَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every single one of us will taste death. You, it doesn't matter if you're Christian, Jew, whatever religion you are. Everybody is on the same page that we're going to die. And we're going to die. The reality of life is death. This is no question asked about that. But what are we planning for the next life? We may have heard this before. But between the two dates of our birth and death, what is between them? A dash. Right? That dash, as the Shaykh was mentioning, some would say it was a day. Some would say it's a few, perhaps in the, a bit of the morning or a bit of the afternoon, a short period of time. What we have in this world is a little dash. There's nothing more at our graveside except that little dash. What are we doing in that little dash, that little period, to have an infinite sign in the next life? To have khalidina fiha abada. To have, to, 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 to build a place where we're going to be in forever. Now, I don't want to talk for too long. So I will leave this short, two short stories with you. 
Okay, continuing where we were, the Sheikh left off. Mashallah, they took all of my points. Mashallah, Jazakallah. <laughs> <laughs> but continuing where he left off, there's a, there was a brother I know, a, a close friend of mine. And this brother, Mashallah, he, he bought a masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him wealth and he bought a masjid. But see, the masjid was maybe one third of the size of this musalla. So it was the time of Ramadan and they needed to rent out a place for Ramadan. And the only place that they got was a, a high school. Now, if you've ever been to a high school, the facilities is very limited. From the very small high schools, the bathroom facilities is very limited. So he decided he was going to buy, you know, these porter potties, and he would set it outside of the masjid. But there's a problem with these porter potties. Someone has to go and clean them after. And this brother with this high status in this masjid, the owner of this masjid, he took that on his own self to take that responsibility in his shoulder. I'm telling you about a brother, mashallah, that not only did he spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he also gave back in many different ways. He used the simple moment, this time that he's been given, and took that opportunity to the max. My dear brothers and sisters, what are we planning for this Ramadan? I asked this question about 13 years ago to a group of 17 year olds. I asked this question 12 years ago to a group of 17 years old. What do you plan to do this Ramadan? And all of them were like, you know what? I'm gonna try to get in my sleep in the morning so I don't feel hungry because it's, it's some part of the Ramadan was still in break. And one of the boy, he said, you know, this Ramadan, I'm gonna utilize it to connect to the meaning of the Quran. He says, I read the Quran, but I don't feel the connect. So he says that this Ramadan, he will use it to connect to the Qur'an. His intention is there, correct? Hours before Ramadan, hours before Ramadan, the night before Ramadan, he got into a car accident and died. 17 years old. He gets into a car accident and he dies. And this was in Chicago, and you visited Chicago, both of you. The masjid in Chicago are very big. There was no single masjid that could hold the amount of people that came for his janazah. We actually had to go to a football field to pray his janazah. But what does that bring for us? He made his intention. He had his niyyah. He planned for his Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose that he would die at that moment. And he could go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, you know what, I intended that this Ramadan, I would connect to the Qur'an in this way. What is our plan? What do we want to get out of this Ramadan? What do we want to get out of this Ramadan? If we want to come here and chill with our friends and, you know, sit down and chat and whatever, go play basketball on the outside, well, you could do that any time of the year. And I wish our entire community was here to listen to what we have, our little reminders, a little advice. Is that we start from the get-go with our children. Bring them. If they're able to pray two rak'ahs, let them pray two rak'ahs with us and let's go with them at home. Maybe we could pray more at home later. Do things that they can connect to the masjid. Don't let them be amongst those that the Amos are yelling at them in the back. You know, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Because they're going to think that the message is rejecting them. Bring them out, but train them the right way. Bring them out and train them the right way. So my humble advice to myself and to all of you is that let us try to prepare for the month of Ramadan with a few things. Number one is have the right intention. Have the right niyyah. See, there's a thing called a riyah, a hidden shirk. It is so dangerous that it is like a black ant on a black night 
It is very hard to see. No one can tell if you're doing this for whatever purpose. Whatever you do, do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost. The second advice I will give you is don't wait until Tuesday night to pick up a Quran. Or don't wait until Tuesday night to, you know, oh now is Ramadan, okay let's see what we could do. Go home today and prepare yourselves. If you haven't been fasting, that's fine. But prepare yourself mentally. If you are mentally prepared, it's going to become very easy for you. If you're mentally prepared for Ramadan, it's going to be very easy for you. And we all know, you know, as teachers, and I'm pretty sure we have all taught students, children can complain about anything, even a bottle of water. Why, why isn't it cold? Why is it too cold? You can complain about anything. Put the complaints aside and do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last and final advice I'll give to myself and to all of you is that remember our brothers and sisters in our community and at the world at large. Maybe we're fasting and we have that privilege of fasting. But there are many out there that do not have that privilege of even fasting. Alhamdulillah, maybe Allah has given us hidayah. There's some out there that don't have this hidayah. There's some of our own brothers and sisters and this is a perfect time to bring this up. You know, they suffer from different type of disorders and diseases and stress and all these problems. And there's a statistics that came out not so long ago. It says that 120 people die every day from opioid addictions. Only opioid addictions. Forget the other drugs. Why do people turn to these drugs? And Muslims are people, right? We're not away from that stat. That stat. We are in the statistics of that. We're in the middle. Why have we? Because we have turned away from what Allah says, Huda lil muttaqin. What's that Huda? The Quran. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to connect back to that Quran. We ask Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Allahumma balighna Ramadan. We ask Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to meet the month of Ramadan with Iman and full hope in you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us truth as truth and help us to follow it. Show us falsehood as falsehood and help us to stay away from it. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help us to utilize this month of Ramadan and take every single opportunity that you give us and utilize it in the way to serve you, Ya Allah. We ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't make us among those that say, I wish I could have, but say, Alhamdulillah, I have done. I ask you, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to guide us and protect us and grant us and our families. Jannatul Firdaus. Wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Ya Rabbil Alameen.